here we have the two leads from the generator uh, here and here and we have this yellow jumper running from this tab to this tab so that the electrons have just one path to follow through the circuit. This wire should be thinner than this wire because according to the markings on the bulbs this wire apparently has a higher resistance than this wire. Higher resistance to the flow of electricity because the wire is thinner, fewer electrons and requiring greater kinetic energy. So that when I crank, we see that the thinner wire in this bulb glows more brightly than the wire in this bulb. Now we can get them both glowing, but this one is always going to glow fat, um, brighter than the other. So that in the thinner wire, the electrons are moving faster, therefore the bulb burns brighter. That's one way to think of this. Uh, there are other factors involved, but this will help you get used to thinking about what goes on in a circuit. And then later on, we'll do the complete model. This is just an introduction. So, which one is easier to crank? What if we were to crank both of these? Okay. Now, this one has what we say is a thin wire, and this is thinner. Is this harder to crank, or is this harder to crank? Well, more resistance implies that there are fewer electrons flowing, which ought to imply that it's easier to crank at a given cranking rate. But it might be that we need to crank faster to get the electrons going. However, if we crank at a, at a given rate, if we put the leads across uh, this thinner bulb and then across this thicker bulb, which I can easily enough do just to demonstrate, Okay, now cranking this bulb, okay, then cranking this bulb at the same rate, I definitely feel that one is harder to crank than the other, and that's something that you should absolutely test with your lab kit so you can uh, relate to these ideas. Now, the current that flows through the circuit for these wires, for this situation, the current consists of electrons. Uh, there are cases where the current carriers are not electrons, where positive charges effectively become the charge carriers. Uh, when you have electrons, when you have electrical current in, uh, di discharging through an ionized gas, for example, uh, in uh, some electrolysis, well, in most electrolysis where you have ions, uh, positive ions moving one way and negative ions or negative charges moving the other, um, it's not always electrons that carry the electrical current. Now, a one amp current is defined as one coulomb per second. A coulomb is a number of electrons, essentially. A coulomb is roughly 6 times 10 to the 18th charges. Now, the coulomb is defined uh, in terms of what happens in some electroplating type experiments uh, where you're actually depositing uh, say copper ions on, on, on one uh, post and uh, taking something from the other post, but you're precipitating ions out of a solution. <coughs> By measuring the weight of those, you can tell how many copper atoms were deposited, and the Coulomb is defined in terms of that. And a one amp current is defined as a one Coulomb per second current, approximately 6 times 10 to the 18th charges per second. And I think that would involve in, in electroplating uh, half that number of copper atoms because I think you need two charges to plate one copper atom. Don't quote me on that. Look it up. Uh, that's off the top of my head. I won't swear to that. Um, we also have the definition of a volt. A volt is a joule per coulomb. 
Now, an amp is a certain number of charges per second, and a volt is a certain energy per coulomb of charges, which could be translated into energy per unit of charge, or energy per fundamental charge, if you like. Now, when I say this many charges per second, I mean this many fundamental charges. That's the magnitude of the charge of an electron. That's what I mean by charge, or the magnitude of the charge of a proton. And what I'm saying is you could express this joule per coulomb, since you know how many electrons make up a coulomb, you could express a joule per coulomb as a, uh, a number of joules per fundamental charge. However, uh, the volt is defined as a joule per coulomb. That means that if I'm cranking one coulomb of electrons past a point in this circuit every second, and actually here I'm probably cranking something like about a tenth of a coulomb through uh, any given point in a second. Okay, but if I'm cranking a certain number of coulombs per second through the circuit, or a certain number of coulombs, then the number of joules it takes me is related to that number of coulombs by how many volts of what we call potential difference, or the voltage that I have through the circuit. Now remember that, that's a fundamental idea, and of course uh, you'll use that to reason in your uh, introductory problem set. You'll see how the definitions of amps and coulombs and volts and rates of uh, charge uh, motion uh, relate to one another.